Hi, I am Dr. Madhu, Senior Surgical Oncologist and Robotic Surgeon from Kim's Hospitals. Today we are going to discuss about esophageal cancer, how it is caused, what are all the risk factors, how it presents, what are all the treatment options. And basically the esophageal cancer patients, most of them, they will be thinking that there is no other option for them. They are going to die in few months, which is considered as a misnomer. Lot of treatment options available, technical advancement is there, taking the healthcare to the next level. And we are going to go into the details of the esophageal cancer patients and starting with uh, certain details. A esophageal cancer patient most of the times he will be presenting with difficulty in swallowing. Initially this difficulty in swallowing will be there for liquids and uh, solids also but most often the, it starts with solids and gets extended to liquids. They present with loss of appetite and there will be malnutrition. The, most of the patients will be malnourished. So these symptoms will be there most, most of the times in esophageal cancer patients. The other symptoms with which they present are uh, sometimes with a back pain, sometimes with vomitings and uh, loss of appetite also. When these patients present to a clinician, we generally advise upper GI endoscopy. So the risk factors that are going to cause esophageal cancer, let us start from the basic. Again, smoking. Smoking is the most predominant risk factor for esophageal cancer. Patient who has chronic gastroesophageal reflux, chronic gastroesophageal reflux also may cause esophageal cancer. So the routine people in the society should not ignore the reflux problems and take adequate treatment at proper time. Alcoholism also is described as a risk factor for esophageal cancer. Certain familial syndromes, almost six to seven familial syndromes are there, which cause the genetic inheritance for these patients with esophageal cancer. So, smoking, alcoholism, family history. Apart from this, people staying in certain areas of India where they consume uh, rough food, rough food uh, that is being uh, heated to abnormal temperatures. This can cause esophageal cancer. Certain pe people are uh, adapted to taking hot liquids. This also can cause esophageal cancer. These are different risk factors that are being described for esophageal cancer. Once these risk factors have been described and the presentation with what symptoms a esophageal cancer patient presents. Now the patient approaches a clinician. Once the patient approaches a clinician, the first investigation we generally advise is upper GA endoscopy, upper gastrointestinal endoscopy. So we refer the patient to a medical gastroenterologist. Medical gastroenterologist does upper GAScopy and take a small biopsy from the lesion. Suppose in this biopsy, we will be getting a particular diagnosis. There are two to three diagnoses that are being mentioned for esophageal cancer. Among them, one is squamosal carcinoma, the other one is the adenocarcinoma, the third one is the adenosquamous carcinoma. In all these uh, diagnoses, once the histopathological diagnosis comes, it is the duty of the surgical oncologist to evaluate the patient properly by radiological investigations like contrast CT chest and abdomen. Based on the apprehension of the patient and certain times we need to know the distance spread also, we generally do whole body PET scan as an other option also. But most of the times, we will be doing a 
contrast enhanced ct chest and abdomen so whole body pet ct is a other option to evaluate so based on this we get the location of the tumor where actually it is located what is the extent of the lesion and whether any regional spread is there or a distant spread is there on these findings we are going to tailor the treatment basically the esophagus is being divided into three parts upper esophagus middle esophagus and lower esophagus this lower esophagus tumors are clubbed with g junction tumors <coughs> so the upper esophageal tumors most of the times the treatment is different middle one third esophagus tumors the treatment is different lower one third esophagus treatment is different so according to the location of the tumor and the extent of the tumor we are going to tailor the treatment of the patient and give the best outcomes so once the disease evaluation and the staging is done the next uh, we have to treat the patient that's only being left out presentation evaluation everything is done the only thing that is being left out is the treatment so in the treatment the first comes is the surgery next is the radiation or chemo radiation the third one is the chemotherapy if we come to the surgical option surgical option is the treatment of choice treatment of choice definitive treatment of choice for esophageal cancer is surgery the surgery we do for esophageal cancer is called esophagectomy for a middle one third tumor or a distal tumor distal esophagus tumor or g junction tumors the surgery can be done if it is confined to the esophagus there is no obvious lymph nodal spread and the lesion seems to be very early not going beyond the boundaries of the esophagus then the surgery is the sure option for those patients this procedure i already told you called esophagectomy this can be done in three methods that is open laparoscopic and robotic for distal one third or lower one third esophagus and g junction tumors which are being clubbed together we generally do a minimal invasive esophagectomy that is either with laparoscopy or robotics so this can be done in two to three positions according to the convenience of the surgeon to give the best outcomes to the patient nowadays the patient most of the patients with esophageal cancer they won't be presenting so much with early disease they will be presenting with little bit advanced locally advanced disease so these patients generally what we do is going to send the patient to the our colleagues radiation oncologist and medical oncologist to give the chemo radiation treatment this is going to downsize the tumor in the esophagus once the tumor is downsized the surgeon can do his job to the utmost level clearance will be good the outcomes are going to be good so prior chemo radiation followed by surgery is going to help these patients suppose if the disease is confined to the esophagus and it is early disease it's not a locally advanced disease surgery is going to help the patient and surgery i already described called esophagectomy the patients has to know that this is not a very big procedure but certain critical care is needed and it is safe operation nowadays previously it is why it was because of lack of critical care people used to think that esophagectomy is a uh, very high risk procedure now the with reasonable amount of critical care and technical expertise in the hands of surgeon in a tertiary care center esophagectomy is a, uh, not a such a high risk procedure and uh, robotics has helped in lymphadenectomy the clearance of the small swellings around the esophagus which we call as lymph nodes that called lymphadenectomy it is better with robotics 
So robotics has got edge in giving better outcomes than laparoscopic hysterectomy in view of collecting more number of lymph nodes. So definitely it is going to help the patient uh, to improve the disease-free survival and also foster recovery. So the open surgery, laparoscopy and robotics has been described and once the surgery is done based on the pathology report, the additional treatment is going to be decided. So this is about the middle one-third esophagus tumors, lower one-third esophagus tumors and GE junction tumors. For upper one-third esophagus tumors, generally we are not going to operate straight away. These patients will be treated, given chemo radiation treatment. If there is any residual disease, we are going to operate. If there is no residual disease, the patient is going to be kept on follow-up. These are all various treatment options available for esophageal cancer. And esophageal cancer is basically develops most of the times due to repeated trauma. Repeated trauma to the mucus. Mucosa. So repeated, if you are able to avoid that repeated trauma by controlling certain risk factors like uh, that eating raw food or preventing gastrophageal, gastroesophageal reflux disease and the region where you disease is endemic taking adequate precautions of not getting exposed to such kind of food material and bringing down the intake of the hot liquids and hot food material these are going to definitely decrease the incidence but and one more thing i forgot to mention is pickle usage and fried food usage Pickles, a lot of pickle intake is also go, going to increase the special cancer. So bring down the usage of pickles and the pickles is not good for you. And bringing down the usage of pickles is definitely going to decrease the incidence of esophageal cancer. It's not that it is going to be completely eradicated, but it definitely modifying these risk factors is going to bring down the incidence of esophageal cancer. When the treatment options are available, why there is worry for the patients? So most of the patients, if they present early, that is the key. That is the key that is going to make the difference in the outcomes. And they should not neglect when there is a slightest loss of fall in the weight or a difficulty in swallowing even solids also. They should immediately approach the physician and take the adequate evaluation and proceed to treatment as early as possible. This is going to make a big difference in their outcomes. Thank you.